shiny antique sinistee. Along with the three segment Dunsparce and the family of three Mousehold, these are what I've deemed as the three rarest shiny Pokemon in the game. But how exactly rare are they? Now let me preface this by saying I was never a shiny hunter. Ever since I was a kid, I would just like to play the game for the game. Just the storyline, beat the game, that's it. But come this game, I am on a whole different level. If there's a quote unquote rare shiny in this game, I want it. But if I want it, I also want numbers. I want hard facts. I want to know how lucky or unlucky I am when I get the shiny. So with that being said, I, I am no Austin John plays. I suck with numbers, I'm horrible at keeping track of data, and I'm just not very good at math in general. But thankfully, my community has 8 times the IQ points I will ever have, so they have been backing up and helping me along the way, so I just want to give a huge shout out to them. Now one more thing before we get into it. We have drawn multiple conclusions from multiple different like 10 to 15 hour streams. So let me just say that this is all theory. Even though we put hours and hours into this research, it could be proven wrong by a single data miner. But until then, this is all I have to go off of, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. Alright, sorry for talking so much. No bullshit, let's get into it. Alright, so Sinistee. I'm not gonna lie, every conclusion that I had to make about Dunsparce and Mousehold all links back to me hunting the shiny antique Sinistee. And I know it sounds like it has no correlation with one another, but before I get into that, if you are just here for the Mousehold and Dunsparce odds, I'm gonna go ahead and show that to you guys right now just so I don't waste your time. And yes, if you do catch the shiny from an outbreak, it can still evolve into the rare form. If you wanna know why, you can stick around, I'll explain it. Okay, so before I explain the odds about Sinistee, I feel like I have to explain a little bit about the different forms of Pokemon. So the first thing I thought when I wanted to hunt this antique shiny Sinistee is an outbreak. Although it's still rare, it just seems like it would give the best odds of me catching this thing. But there's something weird about multiform Pokemon and outbreaks. Now I previously thought, according to Cerebi, if a Pokemon has multiple forms, it can have a different outbreak for each of those forms. But it always confused me how Tatsugiri, which is one of those Pokemon that has different forms, only spawns the curly form in an outbreak, no matter what icon is on the map. So like always, I got to testing. I decided to test if it was only Tatsugiri that had this bug, so I went to the northernmost Starfall base, and I started day skipping to look for a Floet outbreak. Now Floet has 5 different forms, each form being a different color flower. So if I go to the Pokedex, and this works for every Pokemon that has a different form, I looked for the location of each different color flower in the Pokedex. And just as I thought, they all share the same spawn location. So I started resetting looking for an outbreak. And sure enough, no matter what color the flower was, just like Tatsugiri, the only form that spawned, no matter what icon was on the map, was the red flower form. So this told me something crucial. If multiple forms of the same Pokemon share the same spawn location on the map, then only one form of the Pokemon Pokemon will spawn in the outbreak, no matter what icon shows up on the map. The only outliers I could find of this rule were Deerling and Saucebuck because their forms don't share the same location on the map, and Lycanroc because their forms are time-based, not location-based. The only way I was able to find a different color flower from Floet was by stepping outside of the outbreak. So this means one thing. Outbreaks are form locked. There will only be one form of the Pokemon spawning within the outbreak and nothing else. This means, according to the Pokedex, since Sinistee's antique and phony form both share the same spawn location on the map, then only the phony form can have an outbreak. And I've tested this over multiple streams, so that's one hunting method knocked off. Outbreaks are a no-go. But wait. Then how are Dunsparce and Mousehold able to spawn differently? Earlier last stream, I was able to hunt and evolve a shiny Dunsparce into a 3 segment form. Via Outbreak. So that would mean everything I just said about Outbreaks being form locked are just wrong. If Outbreaks were form locked, how was I able to evolve multiple 2 segments and just randomly get a magical Dunsparce that evolves into a 3 segment? That means I got a unique form out of the Outbreak, and that I was wrong about it being form locked. Now I'm just lost. Back to square one. Guess it's just not that simple. Sim simple. Sim pull. Pull. Worm pull. Worm pull. Worm pull. Oh my god! Personality values. A personality value is a very long chain of numbers that is assigned to a Pokemon on spawn. Not evolution. Not catch on spawn. This is how Wormpole evolved into either Cascoon or Silcoon. It was just randomly determined depending on what its personality value was. 
And I think we all know that Wurmple doesn't have two forms. It's just one Pokemon that gets a unique evolution depending on what its personality value is. So, as you have probably figured out, this is exactly how it works for Mousehold and Dunsparce. It's not a different form that's spawning within the outbreak, it's just getting a unique personality value. Given it's more rare than Wurmple, obviously, but it works the same way. And also, there's no way to see this value. Just keep catching shiny Dunsparces and Mouseholds until you eventually get the one that has the value it needs to evolve into the rare form. Keep praying, y'all. I believe in you guys. Oh, okay, now that we figured that out, I can sleep tonight. Now let's get on to the next segment. Alright, at this point, we know three things. One, an antique-only outbreak is not possible because it shares the same spawn as the phony. Two, you can't get an antique in a phony outbreak because the outbreaks are form-locked. And three, this teacup lives in my fucking walls. So that leaves us with one option. Sandwiches. Now let me finally start putting down some numbers for this teacup. So just like Mousehold and the Dunsparce, Authentic Sinistry has a 1 in 100 chance to spawn among its phony forms. Combining this with the base odds for finding a shiny in the wild, the odds for finding a full odds Authentic Shiny Sinistry are 1 in 409,600. Now let's start cutting that number down. Given you have a shiny charm, this already cuts the number in half to 1 in 204,400. Now these are the lowest we can go until sandwiches come in. But before we get into that, I'm going to tell you guys something very important, so listen up. And once again, this is all theory. So in my experience after I found out that I can't do outbreaks to get this antique, I decided to go straight for the encounter method. So I made a sandwich that gave me sparkling title and encounter power level 3 for ghost, and I ran around the area that the Pokedex told me the antique form spawned in, which I'll show on screen right now. But something weird was happening. I wasn't getting shit. I was checking every single Sinistee, shiny or not, to see if they had the antique mark and I wasn't finding anything. And I was doing this for multiple hours, so something wasn't making sense here. So I decided to run a different sandwich running the same boost, but instead of encounter power, I used Humongo for Ghost. And to my surprise, versus hours and hours of hunting a Sinistee with just the antique mark not even shiny, and not finding anything with encounter power, with Humongo power, I managed to find two antiques within like the first 10 minutes. So I wanted to see if the Humongo power was affecting the Sinistee. So I picked up a regular size Sinistee and I went into battle with it. And sure enough, the antique Sinistee I was battling was way bigger than my regular size Sinistee. So thanks to this, this helped me draw a conclusion. So for some reason, it seems encounter power is boosting the phony forms, but not the antique forms. However, it seems that humongo power affects both forms. So this led me to believe that, <laughs> hopefully, and I'm praying this is the case, that sparkling power affects both forms equally as well. And if this is the case, then that number from before drops all the way down to 1 in 60 8,300. Now, I don't know about you, but I would take five digits over six digits any day of the week. So with that, that is the final verdict. As of right now, that is the lowest I can find a way to drop the number for this Pokemon. Now, I've heard that Masuda-ing is impossible and the baby will always breed a phony form, but I don't know how much truth this has to it and I would have to do more testing. Unless anybody knows. If you have any ideas, drop it down in the comments below. I would love to hear them. But with that, that is all I have to share today. Thank you guys for watching, and with the continued support on everything, seriously, I appreciate you guys. And I'm probably going to be hunting this thing live right now on Twitch, so if you want to stop by and say what's up, I would appreciate it. But other than that, hope you guys have a good one, hope you enjoyed, I'm out this bitch. Deuces. Riga. Ooh! <laughs> you get it? Oh! Ooh!